This video has been sponsored by Brilliant. Stick around to see how you can use Brilliant to learn math, science, and more, all at your own pace. If you follow my Twitter, you might know that I finally moved out of on-campus housing and into a new apartment. As you can probably tell from all of my previous videos bemoaning every single imaginable detail of my dorm life, I wasn't exactly a big fan of living among my fellow classmates. Not just because the average student would be more at home in Arkham Asylum, but also because the dorms themselves were built out of embezzled money paper mache and were held together with hopes and dreams. In light of all this, and the fact that our school literally sent out an email saying that they'd run out of money and were going to be milking us for even more, I decided to get off campus this year. Completely unrelated to the actual story, but somewhat tangential, our school releases a yearly crime report, as most schools do, and I was staggered to see that there wasn't a single arson listed as having happened on campus, in spite of me being a peripheral witness to at least two of them. As it turns out, parents and school-ranking newspapers are really keen to read these reports, so our school won't list a crime as having happened unless the perpetrator is caught and convicted. We literally had someone murdered at 3 a.m. in front of our main library last year, but there was never any notification because one, he wasn't a student, and two, it wasn't during school hours. Naturally, this never made it into the report either. Anyways, finding a property to rent proved to be a bigger challenge than I had imagined. I started to look for a property relatively late into the year, and unfortunately, most of my upperclassmen friends had already found someone to pass their apartments to. The first positive response I got came from a housing Facebook group, but to my dismay, it was my old RA. The two of us never got along really well, mostly because she refused to do anything about the freshmen laughing like donkeys into the wee hours of the morning in the hallway outside of my door. Things came to a head when I was listening to an NBA Youngboy album on the night that it had dropped. I had planned on just listening in peace, but after the shrill cackling of smelly, prepubescent children cut through my headphones, I broke out my speaker. After placing it on the windowsill of my room and putting in earplugs, I cranked the volume as high as it would go until the entire dorm was listening to Lil Top. The RA came banging on my door and demanded that I turn off the music, to which I asked, What? You don't like NBA Youngboy? Huh? No. Great. I, watched my grandpa say Peace. I never ended up renting her property, not just because she refused to sell it unless we bought all $3,000 plus dollars worth of her furniture, but also because it was just too expensive. Most of the other home visits we did were similarly unfruitful, either being too far from campus, too expensive, or a literal hellhole. Finally, out of desperation, I started to reach out randomly to upperclassmen I had had classes with in the past, at which point I did find someone who was actually trying to get rid of his apartment. It was in the same building as another apartment I'd actually spotted a while back, but was higher up and $200 a month cheaper. Ecstatic, I took a tour of the place and concluded that for the price point of about $800 a month, it wasn't bad at all. Within the week, we'd signed the papers with the landlord and were set to pick up the rent once the current tenant's lease had ended. Not much happened until I moved into the apartment at the beginning of the summer, having decided to continue my research from the school year. Upon opening the door with my roommate, however, we were met with a rude surprise. Actually, that phrase doesn't really do the situation justice, because this kind of surprise was less like having your friends ditch your party, and more like having your friends stab you 26 times. In spite of telling the previous tenants on multiple occasions that we did not want their furniture, we found a broken piano, a collapsed futon, and a veritable mound of trash slowly decaying in the apartment. There were two chairs that were actually left there, but these were eventually sold without our knowledge and we had somebody come in on a random day and just take them. Seeing as we needed to start living in the apartment as soon as possible, however, we had no choice but to clean out the trash ourselves, stuffing garbage bag after garbage bag full of the old renter's detritus. The previous tents had left in such a rush that the refrigerator hadn't even been emptied completely, leading to pools of questionable dark liquid pooling underneath rotting bags of vegetables. It took nearly 13 hours, but we managed to throw all of the garbage out and deep clean the majority of the biohazards away. This still left me with the problem of the worthless piano and the futon, which my roommate and I actually had no way of getting rid of. The problem was that, even if we managed to get the piano out of the apartment complex, there was nowhere that we could actually think of to dispose of it. As such, I just snapped some pictures, told my landlord, who said she'd take care of it in time, and decided to leave things at that. As I went to settle down for the night, however, I began to notice even more problems. My bathroom had a recently refurbished shower with one of those fancy sliding glass doors, but the roller holding the door on the rails had broken. This meant that the door was now hinged at the only working roller, laying the glass edge trail on the tile below. 
not knowing if the glass was tempered or if it would explode into a million pieces the second I dropped the glass edge a little too hard. I had to lift the door and gently place it down every time I needed to use the shower. Other minor irritations in the bathroom include a toilet seat cover that was loose because it was missized and a clogged shower drain, but none of these were as much of a problem as the complete lack of water pressure in my sink. It didn't matter if I had tried to get cold water, hot water, or both. I could even open and close both of the individual lines leading into the faucet from underneath the sink, but whatever I did, the most I would get was a pathetic trickle of water that was so slow it would take multiple minutes for me to fill up my cup in order to brush my teeth. This clearly pointed to the faucet itself being clogged like your average Taco Bell toilet, which begged the question of how the previous tenants had managed to live like this without going insane. Anyways, I finished brushing my teeth by begging for water like Oliver Twist. Please, sir, may I have some more? I exited the bathroom and walked into my bedroom. I immediately noticed that my ceiling was now covered in tons and tons of these little black dots. I thought it might actually have been mold, but once I got closer, I realized that these specks were alive and writhing about. Instead of mold, I was actually staring at a bug infestation on par with biblical locust plagues. Now, before we continue, I want to tell you about Brilliant, the sponsor of this video and consequently the reason I'll be able to make rent this month. Most of you know that when I'm not deep cleaning my biohazard of an apartment, my day job is a physics student. As such, I'm really excited by what Brilliant has to offer. Ever heard a headline in the news that you wanted to know more about? Maybe you heard people talking about the impact of large language machine learning models like ChatGPT. You might not know what that means, but Brilliant has you covered with their short module on just that. What about the dangers of nuclear energy? Brilliant will walk you through the physics of that too. If you're naturally curious and want to dive into a subject without doing all of the boring background research that may or may not be related, Brilliant is the perfect solution for you. Their tailor-made classes cut out all of the fluff and get straight to the point with intuitive and easy to understand explanations of even the most complicated of phenomena. As a physicist, I'm a big fan of their Physics of the Everyday series, which covers the physics of everything from toilets to auto collisions. These short little modules provide insight into how some of the things that we take for granted work underneath the hood, connecting them to big physics concepts that you might have heard about in the classroom, but never thought you could use in your day-to-day -day life. To try everything that Brilliant has to offer free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org forward slash storytime or click on the link in the description and the pinned comment. The first 200 of you will also get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. Now, why had my room become home to a bug infestation of biblical proportions? Well, since the AC was about as useful as my school's email spam filter sending internships to my spam box, I had opened the window to the apartment while I was in the bathroom to cool the place down. Unfortunately, every single insect in the state had seen how bright my white ceiling was and had taken the opportunity to set up civilization on my roof. I spent the next hour standing on my desk chair, smushing bugs while trying not to crack my head on the floor because the university didn't take my insurance plan. After clearing the bug corpses off of my sheets while trying my best not to gag, I collapsed into bed and started my tumultuous journey to dreamland. Just as soon as I reached for the light, however, I was awoken by the sound of tires screeching. Rubbing the sleep from my eyes, I peeked out from my window and saw a clapped-out Nissan Altima doing a burnout directly in front of my apartment. One of the previous tens had explicitly told me that the road noise wasn't a problem, probably in an effort to pawn off the apartment to anyone gullible enough to listen to them, but I figured that the walls were actually so thin and poorly insulated that you could hear anything louder than a whisper at street level. This is actually an interesting bit of civil engineering design, but modern roads have some degree of sound suppression capability. New cars tend to direct their sound downwards into the ground, and there are asphalt types that are more porous and will actually absorb some of the sound. Seeing as I lived in a shithole, however, this wasn't the case for me, and the road bounced all of the sound straight back up to my window. Over the course of the next week, it became apparent that the previous tenants had trashed the plates and that, furthermore, the landlady had no clue that things were as bad as they were. The walls were covered in miscolored blotches of paint, presumably to cover up whatever stains or damage that had been caused there. Every time I moved a piece of furniture, another trove of garbage would reveal itself, usually consisting of some long-since decomposed organic matter and all the now-dead bugs that had feasted on it before getting stuck and starving to death. Most disgusting were the masses of hair and dead skin I found were clearing out all the sinks. Forget making a wig out of all of this. You could have made an entire Neanderthal fursuit with the amount of garbage I found stuck in those sinks. But it wasn't just the stuff that the old tenants had left that was a problem. There was also issues with the building itself. Being close to a century old, there were bound to be leaks and cracks, but not to this degree. 
The reason the bugs had gotten in at all the other day was because all of the bug netting on the windows was broken. There were splotches of discoloration and cracks in the ceiling, showcasing where water had presumably infiltrated the rafters above and made its way into the paint. The real disaster, however, was the reason behind my poor water pressure. I didn't figure this out until a couple months into my lease, but there were two reasons the sink was so pathetic. The most proximal was that the faucet head itself was clogged full of something, which a repairman noticed and just replaced the whole thing. The root cause, however, was discovered when the building decided to turn off the water for maintenance. When they turned it back on and I opened my sink, a flood of brown came out of the tap, along with several black and brown particulate fragments. This happened every time I turned on my new sink head, and soon enough, the water pressure from my sink had dropped yet again. It was then that I realized that the pipes inside the walls had loose rust, and this was making its way into the water that I used to brush my teeth and wash my face. The small particles would make it through the faucet's filter, but the big chunks would get stuck behind it and ruin the water pressure as I had seen. This suspicion was confirmed when I pried off the little filter and an entire junkyard tumbled into my sink. At the time of recording this, I'm still using filtered water from the kitchen to brush my teeth and wash my face because no inspection has ever been done, even though it's been more than four months since I first told the landlady about this problem and more than five months since I first told the company that manages the building. Now, this has been a very negative video with a lot of complaining, but it hasn't all been bad. I lied. It's actually been horrible. There's no redeeming factor about my living conditions, like me making new friends with the roaches in my walls, or having the ceiling collapse and a trillion dollars worth of gold bars tumble out the hole. The reality is that people I kind of thought of as friends did me dirty to pawn off an otherwise unmarketable apartment in an abject state of filth with an absent landlord. I can't really think of ways that this can get much worse. Oh, that's my new roommate. I heard he's supposed to be loaded, so maybe he can hire someone to fix the Yo, yo, yo! You have to be kidding me.